Hi everyone, I'm Miss Carly from Creative World Art Center. Usually we come into your classrooms to do an art project, but since we're all at home, I'm coming to you through video so you can still be creative and make some art. So today we're going to be making a drawing project and it's going to be a superhero's home cut in half view, just like so. Can you guess who my hero is? I chose to do a mermaid hero, and this mermaid helps save the ocean from different kinds of pollution. So for today's materials, we're going to want a sketch paper, which can just be a regular printer paper, and then some kind of thicker cardstock or mixed media paper for our final drawing. A pencil an eraser just in case, a ruler will be handy, a color pencil or some color pencils. So first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what kind of home we're making for what superhero. So I made a brainstorm list of who my superhero is going to be and what kind of things I want to include in the house. And this mermaid lives underwater and her power is to clean up pollution in the ocean and protect coral reefs. So in her home, I want to have a laboratory, a library, a kitchen, which is going to be a sushi bar. And on the television, it is a on land view so that she knows what's going on on land. Her bedroom is going to be a kelp forest bedroom. And also, I'm going to have a special room with the plastic be gone machine that she invented. So here's my layout sketch of the home. And as you can see, we're trying to design the home as if it's cut in half. So we can see an inside view of everything that's going on in every room. When you're drawing your home and thinking about the shape it can be, you might want to think about the environment that it is in. So for my mermaid, she's living underwater and I wanted her home to kind of feel like some kind of coral within a coral reef. Now think about drawing the big shapes first. You don't want to get into the details just yet. So I'm going to start by sketching the ground and I'm sketching very lightly. And then I have this big oval shape right here on the bottom. Then I'm going to add in this balcony right here in the middle. I'm keeping my grip a little bit loose on my pencil so that I can move my arm across the page in bigger motions. And that's going to help when we're getting these big shapes on our paper. Now I'm deciding I want this balcony to have a kind of a wave formation to it instead of just being straight across. So you can think about changing things as you're sketching on your bigger paper. And also in this home, I have these chutes. These are going to be water tubes that you can swim through to the next room. So here I have a more finished skeleton of the house where I've added in all of the basic details that I need. Take a look at this pathway here. If you want to show that something is going back in space, you can start making it smaller as it goes back. So my pathway is pretty wide down here and then as we move back on the pathway it starts to get more narrow and less wide as it gets to the doorway. So now is our time to draw in all of our details into all the rooms. Let's start with our bottom room. So we're gonna have a lamp there. I'm gonna change the design of the lamp to be a little different than how I made it in my sketch, looking like some kind of coral or an enemy. As I'm drawing in my details, I'm keeping them quite simple as well. I'm doing more of the line work and getting the basic form and structure of it without shading anything yet. You can think about making some things more 3D looking where they have different sides that you can see it to them or it can be very flat like this lamp and this chair. 
I want it to really feel like an underwater theme. I'm gonna do some a little bit of erasing. I know you haven't seen me erase too much, but sometimes you need it in order to show that something is in front of something else. You need to erase part of one thing. So I want these chairs to be in front of that, the table. All right, and then in the background, we're gonna have a sushi bar. So I'm gonna add another floor line back here so that I can have somewhere for my sushi bar to go. So I'm drawing this behind this table. The table's in the front, and then we're gonna have the sushi bar in the background. Now in here, I have a bed, a mermaid's bed, within a kelp forest. Kind of a play on words because we can call it a kelp bed. So I'm going to draw some kelp all around. Not worrying about tiny details yet, just blocking in everything that's going to be in that area. We have the kelp forest continuing a little bit, but here is where my mermaid hero is keeping all of the different mermaid tail outfits that she has. And they're each going to have a different detail on them. Laboratory next. So the laboratory is where our mermaid is keeping a lot of different experiments that she's doing on coral to test how she can help keep certain coral alive. So I'm going to have a bunch of shelves and then maybe one main huge coral. You do have to have lots of ideas in order to fill up your home with a lot of imaginative things that are going to help show who your superhero is and give a little bit of personality to them, even though we don't see them. A bunch of jars on the shelves. Tests going on, maybe some things that look like plants. Let's put a big window right here. Looks a little empty. Now last but not least, we have our plastic be gone machine over here, and these I drew are the vents that are sucking in only plastic into the machine. And now I'm just gonna have some fun drawing in the details, making this look a little bit more like a machine. So I know it's going to need some tubes and some buttons. So this is a very powerful machine. And now I feel pretty good about this. How to do some shading and adding value with a color pencil. Building it up from light to darker values and color. Start by shading in the places that I think are going to be lighter. Be careful as you shade that you're not losing too much of your line work. Now, it's already starting to look like things are getting muddied together and it's hard to tell what is what. But don't worry because we're going to go back over some of our lines and make it a little bit darker. Now, when you're working with color pencil, you can't erase. So, just be careful as you're moving along to work from light to dark until you're really sure that you're ready to make some of those dark lines. So now I'm going over pretty dark over my lines because I really want things to pop out and you to be able to see all the detail. Sushi bar, I left a, a little bit of white space under the sushi bar to make it look like it's glowing with light while everything else is more shaded around it. We have a lighter shade, the darkest, which is our line and then you can add in some medium tones. Now, here's where you're doing drawing with one color, but maybe you wanna add little pops of color in other places. All right, so there's one room, pretty finished, and I can keep moving on and adding shading into the other rooms of the house. I've gotten a long way on my drawing, added a little bit of color in different spots I wanted to stand out. I'm just going to finish up this last room 
and I want to show you guys as you're coloring and shading you might notice that your hand is getting a little bit dirty with the shading rubbing off on it so what you can do is you can get a little piece of scratch paper and then just place it where your hand is gonna sit and you're gonna have to move it as you're drawing a little bit and that will help you to keep your paper nice and clean only get the shading where you want it to be if you feel like something's getting lost next to something else you can make one thing darker than the other thing next to it like right here I made this little corner of this wave area a little bit darker so that it stands out next to the balcony. That way they're not the same tone. The last thing I want to draw in is my bubble shield. The ocean's a rough place. The bubble shield can protect against harsh currents, maybe a big whale bumping into the house. We don't want that to happen. There is my mermaid's superhero at home drawing. All right, so I hope you had fun making this drawing today and you have an awesome house for your superhero. Now you can start thinking about drawing your superhero and seeing how they might fit into this environment. I'd love to see your own drawings and pictures, so if you'd like to, you can take a photo and email it to us at info at cw-arts.org. Also, we have great online live classes if you'd like to make more art with us, and you can sign up for classes on our website at cw-arts.org. Again, thank you so much, you guys. I hope you had a great time, and keep making art and being creative.